Hello, today we're going to go over a very simple circuit and the coding that goes along with it. These skills, when actually applied, can do some really cool stuff in engineering. Now I will talk about some components that are needed to make a simple circuit. First, I will talk about a breadboard. A breadboard is a thin plastic board that is used to make simple circuits, such as the one you're going to be see today. This is much simpler than what is used to power everything around us, but it still gets the job done. The board allows us to make simple connections between different places on the board and different pieces of, that we placed on the breadboard. All the columns of the breadboard are connected along equal amounts of current and voltage to be shared. The rows of the breadboard, however, are distinct from each other, allowing the stuff to be separate. Wires are used to connect different pieces and parts of the breadboard together, bringing voltage from one part to another. Resistors are placed on top of the breadboard to reduce the current running through the wires. Basically, resistors affect the amount of power that go into the rest of the wires in the circuit. LED lights that will also be seen on the circuit today can also be placed on the breadboard. The LED lights are controlled by different amounts of voltages coming to them. The light will only turn on when the correct amount of voltage is, tr is being transferred to that light. In order to control the amount of electricity running to each of the LED lights, microcontrollers were used. A microcontroller is basically a simple computer that controls the electronic system. In the next part, the team will display the circuit that we made and also the simple code that we wrote to make the circuit work. Here is an example of our basic circuit. Power is sent from my laptop to the microcontroller here. It is then sent out through this port into the red wire. From the red wire, it travels along and down to meet this resistor. It goes through the resistor until it hits the light. And then the power needs to keep moving, so it goes out the other end of the light and meets this black wire where it, can, where it is able to ground it. Grounding a circuit makes sure that if too much power is sent, it won't shock me or blow out the light. It also needs to be in a closed loop. Current only runs in one direction, and if there is an opening to the circuit, it will stop working, just like this. Closing the circuit, make sure it can run correctly. Next, we will show you the code used to power the circuit. This is what the code looks like for the circuit that was just previously shown. Coding or programming is a language that allows us to tell a computer how to complete a task. In this case, we are using the code to give instructions to a microcontroller, which is essentially a mini computer. We tell the microcontroller to turn on and off a light. Similar to speaking languages, there are many coding languages. The one we are currently using is called C. In the first line of the code, we use the necessary formatting required by the programming. We then define our output, which is the LED light, which we have named red as it is a red light. We then move on to the main portion of our code, which is our loop. A loop means that this will continue to loop through the code and run forever as long as the circuit is turned on. The code is simple and is supposed to turn on a red light, wait one second, turn off the light, then wait another second, and so on as long as the circuit is turned on. We set the light, which we have named red, equal to 1, which turns on the uh, light, and then we set it equal to 0, which turns it off. Where it says wait is what we call a delay, and that is where we wait one second to go on uh, to the next instruction. So here we turn it on, wait one second, turn it off, wait one second. Here's a more complex circuit. In this one, we added a yellow and a blue light, as well as longer delays. First, the red light turns on for one second, and then the yellow is on for two seconds. Then the blue light is on for three seconds. Then the whole cycle repeats. Next, we will show you the code for this more complex circuit. So this code is similar to the last code, just a little bit more complex and used for a more complex circuit. So here you can see we use a red light, a yellow light, and a blue light. And then we move on to the main code. So as you remember, um, turning it to zero turns the light off and setting it equal to one turns it on. So this is our loop again, so as long as it's um, in the loop and the circuit is turned on, this will run forever until we turn it back off. So here we turn the blue light off and the red light on and the wait one second. Here we turn the red light off, turn the yellow light on, and the wait two seconds. Here we turn the yellow light off and then the blue light on and the wait three seconds. So as you can see, it's pretty similar to the most recent code, just uses more lights and then we do change the delay or the weight as you can change that in the code. Lastly, here is our final circuit. We have multiple lights turn out at the same time and then they flash in a unique pattern. 
Can you figure out how this circuit works? Thanks for watching.